Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Jay Sparrow Start Programming. My name is Ben and today I would like to answer the question of how I would personally learn to program again today if I theoretically had to start from scratch. Since I've been programming for some years now, I've learned a lot about the theory behind it as well as how to learn new things. To be completely honest, I would approach several things differently if I had to start programming from scratch right now. I would even go so far as to say that it wouldn't even take me half the time to learn the things I can currently do. And so that you don't waste too much time and get results much faster, I would like to explain to you how I would learn to program today if I had to start from scratch. Let's get started! Of course, in order to explain to you what would be different today, I have to explain to you what I personally did to learn to program. First of all, I still learned with books. I bought various programming books, read them all and learned the basics of programming there. And if I'm honest, I personally wouldn't learn with books anymore these days, but with YouTube videos or video courses. When I learn something new nowadays, as a programmer I generally never stop learning, then I normally only learn with video courses or YouTube videos and there is a very specific reason for that. Watching videos is just a lot more enjoyable than reading a book and it's also a lot more effective. For me at least, I see the explained concepts right on my screen, I can type them directly in the development environment and also try them out myself. Plus, another expert explains things to me in a much more direct way than if I were just reading a book now. And since nowadays you can adjust speed in video players, you can also learn completely at your own speed and it's never too slow. For example, I personally watch tutorial videos at double speed all the time because I just progress so much faster and find it much more enjoyable. And I think it's clear that there are significantly more videos than books anyway because if you want to get to know any new framework, there is a higher probability that there are more videos about it than you will find in a book. And even if you find a book, it's sometimes difficult nowadays because these frameworks are constantly changing and such a book is outdated very quickly. So that's the first thing I would do differently these days. I would no longer learn with books, just with videos. If I look back now and see how I learned to program and which topics I learned in which order, then I immediately noticed that it could have been much more effective than it was in the end. Because I just learned wildly all over the place, I always learned what I found interesting at the moment and didn't focus on one thing in the beginning and that was a very big mistake. Nowadays I would just look for one language, learn the basics of it first and then I would still focus on this language once I've learned the basics. I wouldn't learn three other languages at the same time or learn the basics of one language and then go straight to the next. I would start a language and then only focus on learning the language that I chose and stick with it. Because if you're constantly jumping from programming language to programming language, then you're basically just sticking to the basics of those different programming languages all the time and are never getting into the deeper concepts that are still there to be explored. So what would I do differently today? I would choose a programming language, learn the basics from it first and then I would start to implement projects. And I would really only learn new things if I really need these things for my projects. So only learn the things that you need for your projects right now, because if you somehow learn thousand different things and go into practice in a similar way, then you forget the things again and you don't understand them properly. All the knowledge doesn't bring you anything if you don't apply it. So these are two very important points that ensure that you progress much faster with your programming skills. Only learn one language first, Focus on these attempts to implement project with this language and if you have to learn new things then only learn it if it's also relevant to the project you want to implement. And while we are on the subject of projects, another point I got wrong on my learning path was that I did far too few independent practical projects during my learning. Learning new programming concepts in theory is also important and you should always start with theory first. However, applying the whole thing in practice is at least as important if not far more important. So always have some small program projects running and the emphasis here as a beginner is on small projects. Don't build a huge project that will burn you out completely, but build many small projects, simply implement them and learn new things over and over again in this way. If you do that, you will learn programming really quickly and you will also become a really good programmer because what makes a good programmer is that he comes up with good solutions quickly in practice and then simply implements them. A pure theoretician always has a hard time solving problems in the real world and takes a really long time before he gets anything right. But if you're a real practical programmer, that's all no problem for you and you will get quickly results. And for this reason, it is important to implement projects. 
Another thing I would definitely do is to start the process of understanding as soon as I can in refactoring code to directly start coding with a high quality. I would look for tools who can help me to refactor my code so that concerns like clean code, dead code, looking for errors and bugs in my program are out of my way. I can remember that as soon as I came into the advanced field, I really had to deal with a lot of stuff concerning refactoring, which was very time consuming and nerve wracking, but this step is also one of the most important when you start to get advanced. Because if you don't have a clear structure in your program, then you will never be able to implement really big projects. There are some options that you can use, but today I would like to introduce you to our tool that we have been developing for years for all Java versions. Captain J Sparrow is your Java refactoring partner when it comes to removing dead code, getting clean code, fixing errors or bugs and learning Java best practices. It can all be done with a single click and you can learn from the suggested changes. Best of all, JSparrow is completely free and you can just drag and drop it into your developer environment and work with it efficiently. If that sounds interesting to you, then be sure to check out the link in the video description. You will come to our homepage and can check out how exactly JSparrow is working. So let's summarize the four steps how I would proceed nowadays if I had to learn programming from scratch. First of all, I wouldn't read books anymore but only work with courses and videos because that's just more pleasant, it's quicker and I see things directly in practice. Secondly, I would no longer study at random. I would choose a language from which to learn the basics and then only learn new things if I really need them for my project at the moment. Because only then they are also relevant for me and it's also worth feeding them into my head because I need them and I can use them directly in practice. Third, I would implement one project after the other and only focus on one programming language and dig deep because that's the only way to really get started. That's how you collect valuable practical experience and that's ultimately what counts in general on the labor market or what counts if I want to be able to develop my own projects. And fourth, I would start learning the topic of the code refactoring process much sooner, use tools so that I can directly learn the best coding practices from the start and can program at a high quality. In that sense, that's it with my tips and what I would do differently if I had to start programming from scratch again. If you liked the video and it helped you, then I would of course be very happy if you subscribe to this channel and give a thumbs up because that way you won't miss any more videos and make sure that you're motivated and stay on the ball when it comes to programming. For the rest, I wish you a lot of fun and success with programming and we will see each other again in the next video. Until then, goodbye!